Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Body TV. We are here today for an awesome, awesome episode. I am just going to open up in Instagram here. So, welcome everyone who's live, and then welcome, hello to everyone who's listening to the recording. Here we go. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo. I'm going to share today about um, something that's been coming up in the mind body community for a while lately around what do I do when it, it's impossible, when I can't heal, when, you know, doctors have told me I have this condition that is irreversible or that this is going to be, you know, how the prognosis goes. This is going to be the story. This is how it's going to go for me. Um, so hello, welcome to everyone who's here live. I love hearing where you're tuning in from and hello to everyone in Instagram. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm a physician practicing mind-body medicine who understands that the mind and body are connected, that the body has the ability to heal itself. And when that's not happening, there's something in the way. You know, what does the body need so that it can do that? So I wanted to share uh, this topic today because there are many people in the mind body community and Facebook talking about like, this is all well and good, but my doctor told me this is all I'm going to get, or I'm always going to need medication, or I'm never going to heal. And I'm not here to tell you your doctor's wrong or no, everything's possible. And, you know, be light and fluffy about it. I'm here to tell you that you don't have to outsource your wisdom. And when it feels heavy, it's always a lie. So there can be lots of doctors who have a certain opinion, a certain perspective, or like their own experience and what their experience tells them. And they may have a lot of conclusions that none of which may be true for you. And so if you've had a chronic disease, even if it's a physical disease or a diagnosis or you've required medication or even if it's known to be genetic, uh, progressive, lifelong, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I am here to tell you and medical science has fully demonstrated these things can shift and change. The body is constantly morphing and changing and there's way more possible than what you have imagined and that what conventional medicine is usually uh, letting us know about, right? That's just not what we're doing in the conventional model. If your arm is off, we can put your arm back on. If your heart is stopped, we can start your heart back up. But what it is not doing is actually how to ignite health, right? How to kill disease, how to fight disease, how to make disease go away, or just like turn off the symptoms of disease. But in that model, it is not where we want to look for how do I heal? And so this is the question so many people have been asking, how do I actually heal? And what if doctors tell me it's impossible? So we're gonna look at that today because there is a lot more possible for you. Hello to Ellen, Michelle, Jaria from Vancouver, BC. So we got Toronto, Texas, Vancouver. Hello, Patty, Heidi, Elaine from Narragansett, Rhode Island. I will be there this summer with my girlfriends from college. Louise, Louisa from Montreal. Awesome. Regina from South Jersey. Hello, Katie. Rebecca from the Netherlands. Jackie from South Carolina. Awesome. Trisha from Boston. Welcome, you guys. I'm really glad to have you here. Gabriella from London. Awesome. San Francisco. Met Louise from Copenhagen. Awesome. Hello, everybody in Instagram. All right. So um, how does this topic resonate for you? How have you... Um, been in that situation where maybe what the doctor is telling you doesn't really jive, feels heavy, feels maybe, um, uh, you know, like, oh, this is impossible. Maybe it's frustrating. I am here to tell you that everyone's allowed to have their own conclusions, but it doesn't mean you need to buy into them as your truth. Hello, sweet baby Gemma. I'm so glad to have you here. So um, someone had mentioned, well, I have this particular illness that's going on and this is a physical illness. Um, and I've had many people ask me things like, well, what if it's uh, uh, cataracts? What if it's macular degeneration? A lot of these things that are, you know, a very physical thing going on. And we can't imagine how there's something in the system 
that could help heal that. And I actually just did a really, really great video for the Embracing Health program, which is starting in June, where I went into a lot of detail about like my model of medicine and how we, uh, you, you, the body is a unified whole. It is self-healing and self-regulating. And then what is stopping that? That's what we want to look at. We want to remove the biggest, you know, measures that are keeping that from happening, not try to micromanage your health, make symptoms go away or fight a disease. So this is where things get a little confusing because we're like, well, how do I fight this? This is not about fighting disease. It's about activating the healing in your system so that it can rebalance around whatever may be going on. So questions, comments, insight. Oh, is my Wi-Fi in and out? Sorry about that. Hello from Los Angeles, from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Awesome. And Tanella. Oh, I'm so glad to see you here. Beautiful. Vicky Bean from, or V Bean from, oh, here we go. Annika from Sweden. Great to see you guys. Okay. So the first thing we've got to look, especially when we get like the conclusion, you can't do this. This is impossible. This will never happen. You're asking too much. Whenever we're triggered by something the doctor said, or even it's like our relative says it and we're like, no, it brings up something heavy in us. Always and a hundred percent of the time, it's because we are holding a limited conclusion about that. That that our innate intelligence knows there's more possible, but we're in a conclusion where we're not allowing that. And it's actually a gift when things come up that trigger us. Oh, sorry about that. Because it those triggers are showing us where we're holding stuff that's not serving us. Almost all of it's unconscious. And we're like, where am I holding this? Your life experience is going to show you. So if you're triggered by the doctor told me I can't have this or, hey, stop trying to wish for something that's impossible or you're in a conclusion about what you think is going on. It's always going to feel heavy. So pay attention to those triggers. Get curious. Soften your body and feel what's happening in here. Where do I feel this physically? What am I thinking right now that may not even be true? And you can always just ask a better question. What's right about this? I'm not getting Oh, it's showing me where I'm holding myself in jail, where I know there's more possible, but I'm buying into this belief and that's why it feels so heavy. And I don't care if this person is the Lyme disease king of the universe. In fact, Jessica uh, Sullivan just shared an awesome uh, video we did yesterday. We're going to be publishing this soon where she talked about like I went to the world renowned Lyme specialist who's got like 30 clinics in however many places. And he told me like, the best you're going to do is 75% better. And she was just devastated. But then she realized like, wait a minute, what if what he thinks is true is not actually true for me? We've got to be pretty brave and bold to understand that our wisdom has way more intelligence than any doctor or medical textbook or all the medical textbooks combined that have ever been created before. We've got to start to tune in. What do I actually know about this? So the conclusions, you can't heal. Here's what's possible. It's going to feel heavy. Why? Because it's where you've given away your power, right? It's like, I have this wisdom and this intelligence that designed and created my body, but let me outsource my information now and find out who out there knows more. And I'm not saying don't get information, don't get support outside you at all. I'm just saying, let it come from what you know. Tune into your wisdom first. And if something feels heavy about this, it's because it's a lie. It is not true for you. When I was diagnosed with this severe form of a autoimmune disease, it felt like devastating. And all the things that that doctor, who was a specialist, trained at Harvard, told me just felt like this can't be my truth. This is not my solution. I know something higher is possible. And because I was willing to listen, I dumped everything I was doing with looking outside myself. I felt like that little duck that's going around in the storybook. Are you my mother? Are you my mother? Are you my mother? Like, what was I looking for? I was looking for my own authority, my self-authority that it's in here. I can tune in and tap in and let it source me. 
but we get conditioned that like, there's nothing in there. Look outside you. That's the authority. That's the person who knows. And we outsource our decisions and we outsource our thinking. You know, we have a global pandemic of this right now where it's like, I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. But look at what that's causing. So all you've got to do is like, hmm, what did it create for me to deny my own wisdom? Oh, I feel heavy. Oh, this it feels impossible. And that just oh, feels devastating. Or just look at the condition of what's happening in my body where I'm not tuning in and opening the channels. Oh, my body's pretty sick and worn out. Okay, what would get created if I tuned in? If I tuned in first, right? Is this true for me? If I tuned in first, what would be the best resources for me to recover? If I tuned in first, what does my body really need right now that I'm trying so hard to find out there? We actually get a lot of insight. So Julie says, so we are to feel our anger and pain, et cetera, but not focus on it. If we keep telling our body we're okay, it eventually goes away. No, because I am not healing myself. I am opening the channels so that my body can rebalance. So if I'm aware, whoa, there's anger in here, get curious about it. What does it feel like? What's the quality of it? I, I go really deep into these exercises in the mind body solution for pain release, uh, which is at drkimd.com forward slash pain hyphen release. <laughs> uh, so that there's a whole program on this, but in brief, it's not about trying to override it. Body, you're okay. You're okay. Think of it like a child and you're like child falls and they're like, ah, oh, oh, it's okay. You're okay. And you teach them to suppress what's happening. Now I'm not saying that isn't helpful. I'm saying there are instances where it's nothing but suppressive. And so we're suppressing what's actually we're feeling like I'm not okay right now. I actually need to scream. I actually need to cry. I'm actually in pain. I'm in despair. Fill in the blank with the frequency of choice that may be coming up. Can I make space for it? It's okay to scream. It's okay to feel this. It's okay there's anger. You're right in feeling angry. And like let that part of me have it and support the energy and releasing. So I wouldn't say, Julie, that is exactly where I'm at with this. Uh, if we keep telling the body we're okay, it will eventually go away because that's actually just going to be suppressive, <laughs> right? And the body's like, I'm not okay. Where am I not okay? Oh, wow. It's where I told myself I wasn't good enough. Oh, thank you for showing me this. Thank you, body. Thank you, illness, for showing me where I've held this crap that's totally destroying me. I want to see this. In, in the conventional system, I just want it to go away. We just got to make it go away. It's wrong. It's bad. What if there's nothing wrong with the illness or the disease? What if it's actually there to show us something so we awaken to greater wholeness and let go of these pieces we've got on ourselves? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Right. You are my mother. Toss you a lime over here. I'm self-treating with a rife machine. It's so hard. Deborah, eight years of Lyme, cured 100%. Herbs and change of mindset and energy after the top Lyme doctor said nothing more would work. That's exactly what happened for Jess. Uh, La Kama, I couldn't sleep all night with shortness of breath. I've given away my power to my mom's scary diagnosis. It's always going to feel heavy when we give away our power. So don't outsource your thinking. Um, when the doctor told me what I had, it was devastating. I cried and felt I lost my power because I had to take meds. I didn't want to take, it was so heavy. So here's the truth. You never have to take anything. You can choose to take them and get on board with that uh, recommendation, or you can choose not to take them. But if you think I have to take them, you immediately go into victim consciousness. You can't actually heal when you're outsourcing your thinking, right? Well, I know I don't want to do this, but he's telling me I have to. So I have to do this. No, 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 no. You either choose to do it or you choose to not do it. And you're free to choose either one. But that means you've got to get the awareness about which is the best choice. 
right? Not, well, he told me it was the best choice, so I have to do what he tells me. No, 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 no. You've got to be on board with your medical care that like we are making a decision together. And if that doctor has explained in a way that makes sense, here's what I think is going on. Here's what I think will benefit the situation. And you're like, I get it. I trust what you're saying. And that aligns with what I've got going inside me. Like that feels right. Great. Take the recommendation and choose to take the medication. But if it doesn't feel aligned and you're like, mm, something about this, just not 100%, thank you. You can let him have his conclusion. You can let him have his perspective and you can go find what's really aligned for you. Maybe it's not right now, right? Or maybe it's take it right now and maybe that's going to change. Or maybe not right now. Let me see what else is possible. But it's going to feel devastating when we give away our power and think, I have to do this. Never true. It's so difficult to fight the forces sometimes. I'm wondering how these tools might help my child with ADHD and autism. Yep. And I've seen a lot, a lot, a lot when adults participate in this work, you're shifting your energy system. It is palpable to your kid. They are very energy sensitive. They will feel what's happening in you, whether you deny it or you're, no, oh, I'm fine. Everything's good. And they feel the discord of like, well, I feel something else. Well, I must be wrong because she's saying she's fine. And then they shut down their own inner knowing. That's a big thing that happens in the kid's system is they learn to discount what they know and look outside them. Well, everyone's telling me it's okay, so they must be right. But wow, I sure do feel a lack of ease in here around what's going on. They will feel it. So you're either teaching your kids to align and trust their wisdom or to disconnect from it. Um, what about lumbar issues? So any area of the body can really manifest I and mean, you can get a deeper connection with what's actually going on in here uh, and have awareness about it, whether it's your back, it's your neck, it's your thyroid. Um, you've got to tune in to let that awareness in. So here's what I would say is like my biggest takeaway, let go of the how. Because as soon as you go into a space where, uh, you know, maybe it's a doctor, maybe it's just society at large that says you have to do this and then you buy it and you're like, oh, but you realize like, mm, there's something else possible, but I don't know what, I don't know how, don't let that deter you. It's okay not to know how, your system can figure it out. Awareness can come in. So if all you do is stay open to what else might be possible here? Physically soften your body, breathe a little more fully, I guarantee you, awareness will come in, maybe in small little trickles, maybe all at once. And you're like, oh, I could just do that. So we um, have the question right now, you know, we're traveling out East for the summer. How are we going to do this? Do we all hop on a plane? Do we hire something private? Do we take a, uh, a, a you know, a, a, tra a camper and like drive out there and nothing feels quite a hundred percent yet um, in the environment we're in. So I'm like, Hmm, what else is possible? And anything can change in a day. So I'm not distressed that we haven't bought our tickets yet. Like, okay, there's here that, you know, there's something floating out there and I'll be in flow. What else is possible? So don't require that things come to fruition immediately. Let yourself stay in the curiosity. I never really feel the fear I get until I get the chest pains. Yep. So it will solidify into a physical expression when we keep suppressing the emotional expression. Emotion is energy in motion. Energy, all energy wants to move. To be healthy, energy has to move. So if we have like tension in the body, energy can't move. You're going to manifest pain. You're going to manifest illness in some form. Whether that's like physical tension, emotional tension, energetic tension, our body is pure energy. Energy needs to move to have full flow and health. So it's nothing wrong with that it will physicalize and then you feel the pain in your chest. But if you're willing to soften and sense that pain and breathe into it, be willing to feel more of what you're feeling instead of trying to feel less, the energy will always move. Can my body tools be used with someone with dementia? Yes, a thousand percent. And if they're able to like 
participate to a, a certain degree, um, this will make a huge difference because it's about awakening. When we awaken, there's new neurologic channels, open channels and pathways, things shift and change in the body, inflammation decreases, and we can absolutely um, reverse what's happening. Elaine, how to start the healing and lose the overwhelm. I have the victim mentality. Yeah, so let's start with this. So we, hey, we can only eat what's on our plate. We want to get over there to where it's better and we do this other thing, but you have to be where you are now. That is the access point. That is the portal to all of it. So what's here now is overwhelm. Embrace the overwhelm. Welcome it. Feel it in your physical body. Do you feel it on your chest? Is it a pressure? Do you feel it on your shoulders? Is it a heaviness? Do you feel it in your belly? And it's like a, a jiggliness. Like, what do you feel? That is overwhelming. So tune in to what's here now. That will always be the gateway to more. How do you know if it's your fear or being contracted because of an outside thing? It's, uh, it's never an outside thing. The outside will trigger when I'm holding inside. So if I have fear, let's say I'm afraid uh, about money, either I have lots of money and I'm afraid I'm going to lose it, or I don't have any money. I'm afraid I'm never going to get it. Like it's the same thing. All right. And I have this, but I'm walking around and managing it. I'm like, oh, everything's fine. Right. As long as X, Y, Z is in my bank account, or as long as uh, my job is paying me. And then I think my job is my source. But then as soon as like, my job, if I think that's my source, goes away, right? I'm like, ah, I'm going to feel all the fear. Is it the outside source or is it what I'm holding in me? It's always what I'm holding in me. And this outside thing or circumstance has me feel it. That's why so many people are completely vested in controlling their environment, controlling the people, controlling their situation, controlling their body because they don't want to feel what's really in here. And as long as I have X, Y, Z, or as long as she doesn't ever do that to me again, I'm not going to have to feel what I'm carrying in here. But either way, I'm the one carrying it. I can choose to let it release. I can choose to let it go. Ooh. Is staying in the curiosity enough? Yes. Or does there need to be a definite answer eventually? Nope. And, and almost never. Do I have to process things consciously that way? For example, um, you know, what else is possible here? I haven't imagined. Now, I could either just have that thing happen like, oh, gosh, my friend told me about this woman she was working with for singing. And I've been aware, like, I want to have more joy in my life. I love my work. I get so much out of it. But then I'll go into these periods where all my joy is there. And I'm like, no, no, that doesn't feel right. Like, don't keep putting so much there. What else is there? And I've got my kids. I've got my husband. Like, it's a lot. But then sometimes I feel like, oh, I want to have expansion and joy in other areas. So what else is possible? That's enough. Just curiosity. And my friend told me about this amazing woman. And I went and had a voice lesson with her. And it's, it's, I can't even describe how much fun, how much I realized I could do. And I'm like, I want to do this all the time. So two of my girlfriends are also working with her. She's like, oh, we're totally going to put together a girl band. Let's do this. Let's see, you know, what we can do together. I can totally show you how to do this, how to do this. And she was so confident. I was like, we're doing this. So staying in the energy, I didn't have to have like, oh, maybe I could do this. Okay, let's manifest that. It just came in. And that is really typical of how healing happens in the body. It will happen for you, through you, doesn't come from you. So great question, Antonella. Uh, staying in curiosity is what allows things to be welcomed in. And almost never do I have like a conscious, uh, okay, do this thing. It's, it's always just, I'll be guided and it will happen. <laughs> Yes, did that with yes to blood pressure medicine, strong no to stations, statins for cholesterol. Well, I, mm, 
trust yourself and what feels right or doesn't, because there's a lot of conclusions about if you have high cholesterol, you have to be on a statin. Whoa, whoa, whoa let's, let's just hold on there. Is that actually true? Well, we can look at the science, which definitely shows it's not true for various reasons. We can look at maybe other individuals who have had really bad outcomes with that. And we can look at for ourselves, like the global picture of my health and all the things it's going to compromise. And then this one thing that I think it's going to control, is that actually necessary to do it this way? I don't know. Let's look. So you can let a lot more awareness in. If you expand the picture, get out of the conclusion and actually look at what's going to be the best thing to me. What if I just, you know, obviously shifting my diet could be a big deal, but what if I just decrease my stress level? So I'm not in all the massive amount of inflammation that caused that inner shearing and, you know, problems inside the vessels that make the cholesterol be a problem. Cholesterol has not been shown to be a problem if we're not having those inflammatory factors in the equation. So there are different ways for what's going to create my highest health, longevity, and vitality. And so if I'm asking that question instead of, how do I make my cholesterol go down? How do I make my cholesterol go down? Because I'm in this frenzy that I think this has to happen this way. I'm going to be tuning into very different information. Okay, Anya, I've been I've been dealing with plantar fasciitis for a year and now a heel spur. Is there any specific insight you have for this condition? I wouldn't necessarily like give you a specific for your situation. Um there are a lot of things that are going to increase stress and tension in the tissue. And for me, anytime I have something like that come up because the body can just go into <gasps> right tension, fear. Oh my god, what's going on? especially something like that, where it's like a lot of people will have that for years and you're like, oh no, I have this thing. Illness is not a thing. Very important to understand that. I am in a temporary arrangement, situation, expression. What would it take to loosen up around this and allow this to resolve? So stay in the space of allowing, you gotta give it over to the manager physically soften your body. So whenever something like this comes up for me, I always just physically soften my body first. That's a major access point, not only to let tension release, and usually the pain will go away right away, but to let awareness come in. So start asking for clarity around that is what I would share with you. Um, strong no to, <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm super stressed about this. Uh, Toshua, what are you stressed about? How about rheumatoid arthritis? Yes, rheumatoid arthritis has been shown to be a very strong inflammatory situation that, you know, the joints will have a, 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 an actual alteration of the joint. So we'll have physical changes that are happening there. And most doctors will say this is irreversible. So I'm not saying your situation is reversible irreversible. I'm saying if that feels heavy, uh, like a despairing or like, oh no, it's because it's not true for you because you're buying into a lie. I'll always have pain and limitation. Well, maybe there's a way to have a resolution of that, whether or whether or not the joint completely uh, reforms. It's kind of irrelevant. You can have significant decreases of pain. You can have significant deceleration of that disease. And I also have seen joint changes, reformation of the actual joint structure happen as well. So when we start looking at like, whoa, how does that happen? Instead of, no, that's impossible. I know that can't happen. We actually enter a whole other realm of science, information, stories, data, um, and really an understanding of what is going on in the body. Can a joint reform and shift and change? These cells are constantly shifting and changing. And especially with rheumatoid arthritis, which is such a massive inflammatory condition, um, anything we do to decrease the generalized inflammation in the body, which every single tool I've ever shared in my videos or broadcasts or any of my programs is going to do that, um, will be able to reverse the symptoms, decrease the symptoms, help uh, even slightly decrease the symptoms, which can make a massive difference. But like I said, we've got to tune in for ourselves to like, okay, what's the best path for me? It may feel totally aligned that 
I'm going to take this medication or I'm going to have a surgery. Okay, great. Get taken care of. But if you don't look, you don't know. And if you're outsourcing your thinking, you're going to be in the conclusion that that person has held about what has to happen, what can happen, what can happen that may not actually be what's the highest possibility you can access. <laughs> if you feel a strong, positive urge to pursue something, is that what mostly guides you? Yeah, I would say that sounds <laughs> that sounds good. Thanks, Gemma. What about estrogen dominance and fibroids? So it's really important to understand every single factor of every single part of what's happening in your body responds strongly, not subtly, to what's going on in your system. Am I in anger, hatred, repression? Oh, I got to be in a better place. I don't want to be in this place. I'm not good enough. I should be so further along. Whatever the story is. I've, oh, as I get older, I've got to fight harder for health. I'm going to have disease. Like those are records playing that are constantly sending a really strong message that suppresses your health, that increases cortisol, increases inflammation, totally distorts your hormones. And when we come into an alignment that allows... I embrace myself as I am. It's okay. I'm feeling what I'm feeling right now. What else might be possible? It actually shifts what's happening chemically and cellularly. So let that work in your favor, even with plantar fasciitis, even with rheumatoid arthritis. I have firsthand experience with this and 100% agree. The rheumatoid arthritis mama in Instagram. I would love to hear more from you on that. That sounds like a cool... Uh, theme that you're representing there. So thanks for being here. I mean, once it was funny because I said uh, my daughter and I met this really amazing woman named Boston. I'm from Boston. She's here in Durango and just opened this soap shop in downtown. And we love like homemade soap. One of them looked like a unicorn. One of them was a mermaid tail. But what she said was, you know, she's created this whole business around the fact that her child had severe uh, atopic dermatitis, uh, eczema when he was young. And it was related to like the topical things and the chemicals in the soap and the detergents. And she's like, I had to kind of create my own soap. And so I learned what to do. His skin cleared up. He was healthy, but I was really passionate about this, wanted to share it with others. And she created a whole business around it. And I said to my daughter, like pretty much every entrepreneur who's really passionate about what they're doing and has created something that's never been created before, had it because of a personal experience with someone or something they love because love is the driver love is connecting with love is the greatest way to allow powerful manifestation you'll be driven you'll grow and expand you'll be inspired and fueled to do certain things so whether that's what allows your body to heal or creates a whole business like this individual did or what the rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis mama has going on here. Like she had an experience that went beyond the whole construct of the conclusion of the impossible. And it was like, whoa, this isn't supposed to be possible, but it is possible. How does this happen? How can I recreate this? How can I share this with more people so more people can access this possibility? That is exactly what I'm doing in medicine. I know there's way more possible beyond the conclusions we've made in the conventional system. And the fact that we have so much science to demonstrate that that's also like been kept under the rug as well is kind of curious. Um, but I don't need more information for me to get curious and start exploring that and start looking at what would it take for more people to access this kind of healing, like true healing where I don't have disease anymore versus put a Band-Aid on it so I don't feel it as bad, but it's certainly still there. What I've seen in medicine is all illness is assisting our awakening, assisting us in getting clear when we're giving our power away, when we're tuning into conclusions that really aren't true for us, and when we haven't really learned to listen to the wisdom within us. Hello, Stephen Donovan. Emotional fluency isn't exactly a strength. Any tricks for being able to articulate individual emotions that make up an overall strong negative reaction. P.S. You're from Malden. <laughs> All right, smarty pants. So uh, 
we don't actually need to have the vocabulary to um, share exactly what we're feeling, right? Like I'm feeling anger. I'm feeling frustrated because of blah, blah, blah. If we can tune in to what we're feeling and begin to sensitize ourselves, which for a lot of people, like highly sensitive people, it's like a, it's almost like it's been seen as a disease. And it's like highly sensitive people are people too. No, I would say highly pe sensitive people are here to change the freaking world. Because if we're not sensitized, we're going to keep doing stupid things that are toxifying our planet and toxifying our bodies and be like, oh, let me just find another medicine to help treat these symptoms. Instead of realizing like, wait a minute, why don't we stop doing that? Because it's killing millions of people. We will see when we become more sensitized. It is not hard to see what's going on. But do we have to name it, get commit, you know, really clear and aware of like, what is this going on? When did this happen? Maybe it was this thing that happened when I was six. No, absolutely not. Because it's just going to bring us more into our mind and into analysis, which is like I mentioned, don't go into the how just go into the curiosity. So, huh, what am I feeling in my body? Oh, it feels like a pressure in my chest. Oh, it feels like a black hole in my stomach. The more you tune in, the more you will become aware, I guarantee you, even if at first you're like, nah, nothing, I don't feel anything, nothing there. If you keep just physically softening and bringing your awareness in your body and breathing, the energy will move. And it will wake up the centers in your brain that do begin to perceive what is going on, what you're sensing, feeling, and experiencing. So you don't even need words for it because the energy is going to move as you tune in, witness it, allow it, soften your body. And a lot of times it will bypass the consciousness. Like you're like, I don't even know what I just cleared, but wow, I feel like a different person. So Become aware of what are you feeling physically, and that's a really good gateway to begin to let the emotional energy come up, be more conscious, and move. Hope that helped, Mr. Malden. Julie, your work resonates with me deeply. I know my symptoms are due to repressed emotions. I'm too much in my head and trying to live in my heart. How do you rewrite a diagnosis that you brought into, bought into so long ago? It's kind of the same thing, right? Because all of those are like, where am I holding this in my body? If you just spend five minutes to like soften your body and breathe every day and feel like, oh, where are things moving? Where's the breath moving? Where are things not moving? Bring breath into those, <laughs> into those areas. The energy is going to move for you. 99% of it is going to bypass your conscious awareness. Emotions are energy in motion, and it's when they're not <laughs> able to move that they become densities, and we feel it. Every time I get significantly better and was faithful and happy about it, I relapsed worse. Why? Because you're still in suppression. This is one of the things. So we're doing a, a, a interview series through May with all these individuals who've been in my Embracing Health program who have had really incredible um, resolution of like very severe illnesses. And universally, what I've seen is that when they've repressed their symptoms, it would, you know, things would get better. Oh, good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm free. And they were aware there was always this like, <gasps> I hope it doesn't come back. So you're still carrying the same energy. It hasn't actually gone anywhere. It's just kind of changed forms or you get better at managing it and it's not actually resolved. So until there's like complete non-resistance in the system, it doesn't actually completely transmute. I mean, that might be a lot to receive in this space. We go a lot deeper into it when I work with people live and bring them through this process, but just begin to get a little curious about that. That, that, you know, hey, what am I suppressing? That it like comes back, it comes back, it comes back because we're always moving forward. And so I may be moving forward to release deeper layers of that density and it will come up again because more of it's clearing now, but it won't feel like, oh, why is this back? Like your mind might do that, but you'll actually be able to let things move at a much deeper level. Um, 
can this truly heal the heart or reverse might be going on? Yes. It, you guys, this I've studied since I'm 16 years old. Mind, body, medicine, um, have the body heals, quote, spontaneous healing, like for a long time. And what I've seen is there is there is virtually every disease ever known to man that has responded to this rearrangement. When I rearrange my internal system, which is like my programming, my cellular communication, the messages being sent by my hormonal system, my immune system, my endocrine system, when I rearrange that, virtually every disease we've ever known has already been shown to resolve, not just not get worse, not just improve. We have had resolution. So when you study this stuff as much as I have, like you have the awareness of what's really going on, which is way beyond what we've understood in the conventional system of your body is just a physical thing. We need to physically fix you. You're broken. We're not just physical. We are energy. My soulmate, my soulmates and me, I've been cured of an illness for many years but my body still has symptoms and pain. When I'm distracted, the symptoms are gone. Why is this happening? Oh, this is great. So I um, I really love the work of, of Tim Galloway, um, which there's such a cool story about this, who wrote um, The Inner Game of Tennis. And this was all about how you don't need to micromanage your forehand. If you let go the self too, which is like your higher self, your intelligent self, your infinite self, what I call the infinite self, is gonna learn, is gonna get the gist of it. If you just let go, it's gonna get it and your body knows how to do the thing. But what we're doing is like trying to hit the forehand. Oh, I've gotta get better at it. Oh my God, why the hell did I do that? Oh, I'm so bad at tennis. Or, oh, I did awesome. People are gonna love me. I'm gonna be better at tennis ego gets in the way and it creates physical tension in the body, which we know is not going to improve your forehand. And it also tries to kind of micromanage the stuff. There's no way you could, you know, mentally figure out like just how much tension do I need in my wrist to like hold the racket, but be, you know, resilient enough to let it swing at the same time. Never mind the billions of other things going on with like how, what's happening in my deltoid as I take that backhand and then come back into the forward forehand, you know, and, and hit and What about the follow through? There's a billion things going on. There's no way you could micromanage that. But the reason he found this was he realized like, he's this amazing tennis player, but when I'm trying to teach this to people, they're not getting better. What do I actually have to do to get them better? This is exactly what I did as a doctor. Oh, and I'm trying to micromanage their physiology. They're not actually getting better. What do I actually do? have to do to help people heal? It's the same thing. He teaches you to let go of self one, which is like ego, micromanage my forehand. I've got to be better and surrender to self two, which is the infinite wisdom that comes through the body and knows how to nail the perfect forehand, backhand, serve, whatever you're gonna call it, and continue to learn. So this is what I have created in my practice. There is an intelligence in your system that freaking knows how to heal your body that created your liver, your kidney, and your spleen, and all the amazing things that they're doing in every moment, and can help them repair and restore if disease is happening. But how much am I letting that in versus trying to micromanage because I'm clamped down in fear? The more I'm in fear, the more I'm shutting down to self too. That's the biggest thing that's happening with so many people with chronic illness. They're shutting down to the innate intelligence in their body. So when you're distracted, right? If I'm distracted and I'm like, ah, let me just whack that ball back, right? Someone hits a ball and I just like, let me throw it back. And it's this amazing forehand. Why? Because I wasn't trying to hit a good forehand. When we surrender to self too, unbelievable stuff can happen. That's why when you're quote distracted, physiology is running smoothly. You have no symptoms. So great that you asked that, my soulmates and me, because it's a great example of what can actually happen in the body when we let go. All right. I am at drkimd.com. I'll be here every week at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, we do have the series, as I mentioned, um, med med Medical Miracles, starting in May in a few weeks from 
um, individuals who have participated in that deeper level of this work with me because I want people to see what's possible, that this is not a hypothetical, this is not an idea, this is not something that maybe somewhere in some book you're going to read some person had. There are people who went through the journey of like, what are you talking about? We're told that this was impossible, felt the despair and hopelessness, had no idea how to do any of this, but allowed it to happen anyway. I'm going to share the Tim Galloway story since I already started with that. So, um, so the inner game of tennis author, I've been for like a year. I've got to meet this guy. I've got to interview him. I am so excited to have a conversation with him. And I want to write the inner game of healing. And yesterday, I, and I haven't been able to do it. I reached out to his team. I've like emailed. And yesterday I mentioned something about this self one, self two, and how much I love his work, how parallel it is. And one of the participants in my awakened practitioner group said, Tim Galloway is my uncle. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, hook me up. I want to meet Tim Galloway. So um, that should be in the works and I will maybe be interviewing him soon. But I was so excited because I felt like such a strong connection this is going to happen. We got to do this. And how, how, I don't know how, how are we going to make it happen? This is a perfect example of how synchronicity can line up when we allow it. So practice that. Let me know what happens for you. Speak more about what you're planning in June regarding health. So the Embracing Health program, I've run this for about, oh boy, nine or 10 years, it was originally under a different name called Radical Health. Um, and we've we've changed this maybe five years ago, four years ago to Embracing Health, added a whole bunch of stuff into the program. And I basically walk people through a journey of awakening to self to the whole self and allowing that to feed and nurture the body. So whatever illness is going on, symptoms are going on, depression, anxiety, physical pain, diagnoses of all kinds. Many of the people who've come through have had chronic fatigue, brain fog, Lyme disease, autoimmune disease, thyroid disease, uh, weight gain, unexplained symptoms we have no answers for at all, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, osteoarthritis, uh, oh, de degenerative uh, joint disease, but also lots of um, inflammatory bowel uh, disease, uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, so this is all in like kind of the same realm of what I guess is like a black box in medicine of no man's land of we really don't know what's going on. We don't know why this is happening. We don't know what to do to get you better. And yeah, we may know, hey, there's certain genetic links or hey, there's inflammation. But why am I having this inflammation? I was fine before. What's going on? What's actually going on in my body? Which I have been able to bring people so much more awareness of to access um, how healing can happen and let that in. So that is what we're starting in June. It's at drkimd.com forward slash health, where I work with people over the course of a year. We do live calls each uh month on zoom so people can interact one-on-one -on -one with me in those calls um, and then live check-in calls each week thank you guys for being here that's what we have starting in june so that's going to be open in about a month um, but we'll share more on that later so anybody who would like to go deeper in this work oh you're so sweet ellen i highly recommend the embracing health program all right. I love you guys. I'm at drkimd.com. Stay tuned. You can be here each week live on Wednesdays at 11. And um, we do have a, a group retreat coming up in the fall. So you can stay tuned for that as well. It's for women only. Sorry, Steve Donovan. I know you would love to be there. I am looking forward to connecting more with all of you soon. Lots of love. Bye, Gemma. <laughs> Bye.